I have with me UNICEF India representative Dr. Yasmin. Ma'am will be telling us what are the future plan for UNICEF, what are the learning for UNICEF in these 70 years and what they project India as a nation post this year. First of all, welcome ma'am. Thank so, you. My first question to you is we have seen Jan Andolan coming around in India for a very long time. Do you feel Indian values and Indian values towards Jan Andolan have been helping it around with especially UNICEF in conducting these activities? So we have been very closely involved with government in all the Andalans that are Jan Andalans that are there. We've seen that it's without the Jan Andalan we would not have seen the type of changes that Swachh Bharat has brought about. It's not just about constructing a toilet or putting a service in place. It's about motivating the individual and the collective to adopt a change in behavior, behavior that is centuries old. So definitely it plays a role. We're looking at a Jan Andalan for, for Poshan Abhiyan. Without that, we're not going to see the change in, in how households and communities look at food and nutrition, uh, in how young children are fed. Is breastfeeding continued? Uh, how many Katoris should have a nine-month-old baby have? Right. So how we, unless we work on it as a collective, we won't see the types of change. Mm -hmm. um, we need the Jan Andalan also for our immunization programming, for getting girls uh, not to be married out. We need Jan Andalan to, to look at how we can enhance employment opportunities for young people. Right. So very much our journey has been one of moving from focusing on supply-driven, service-driven, to now looking at really how do we, now that all the other elements are in place, how do we get the motivation at the people's right. level going on? So my next question is, uh, UNICEF as we have seen has been evolving all over around in these 70 years from an from organization which was working only on ground then partnering with go Indian government then going up and partnering with private sector. What's next for the UNICEF to evolve? So for us, our evolution will have to continue to grow in this. Our work with the private sector is very new through UWA where we recognize that we have to pay attention to how young people are prepared in school for the transition to work. What are the life skills and the financial literacy that they need if they are to become entrepreneurs or they are to, uh, to be innovative in, in how they earn uh, for their living. And of course, how we look at their empowerment. So it's really important that we look work much closer with the private sector, with government, with civil society to turn the youth bulge into a dividend rather than it becoming disastrous, disastrous if we don't listen to young people, if we don't listen to their aspirations and if we don't help them along the way. According to you, what should be the next initiative on which Jan Andolan must be launched? <laughs> if you were to advise Prime Minister, what should, I, what should you advise him to launch a Jan Andolan next for? I think that Jan Andolan has to be looking at reducing that all children everywhere have access to the services they need, um, are living in a community where they are valued, whether they're boy or girl, uh, that they have access to education, to health, and also participation, to sport, to their growing and learning, to their uh, psychosocial well-being. Um, and growing up in an environment that is free of violence, uh, and I think that is one of the biggest uh, challenges that we will face. How do we nurture a community, a society, where we abhor violence, where we all stand up uh, against, against violence? violence. Right. So this was Dr. Yasmin. She spoke about her organization's achievement in India, challenges for the organization, and what UNICEF expects from Indian society to grow as in not just a developing nation in terms of infrastructure and economy, but as in society, as in community. Rohan Agrawal for INS TV.